The events of Luxair Flight 9642 were one where the approach to the destination airport went horribly wrong extremely quick. A series of events which had caught the pilots off guard had led them to flying their small plane into dense fog and inadvertently enabling the aircraft's reverse thrust mid-flight. Over the span of a few minutes, this approach went from relatively routine to a struggling battle to save the plane. Ultimately, the plane crashed 3.5 kilometers short of the runway, coming down in a field killing 20 people on board. Just what happened on this plane, and what were the series of events which led to this accident? The country of Luxembourg is a small nation in Western Europe, nestled between France, Germany and Belgium. The country which only has a population of 600,000 has just one airport located in the capital, Luxembourg City. Luxembourg's Findel Airport is the base hub for the country's national airline, Luxair. Their small fleet of planes connect the country with the rest of Europe. In 2002, Luxair operated four Dutch-built Fokker 50 airplanes as part of their turboprop fleet. Launched in the mid-1980s, the Fokker 50 was a popular commuter plane for its time, especially in Europe. The manufacturer, Fokker, had a long history in producing all kinds of airplanes until the company's bankruptcy in 1996. The Fokker 50 was one of the company's most popular planes. It too was developed from an older plane, the Fokker 27. On November 6, 2002, a Luxair Fokker 50 aircraft had been making a routine trip between Luxembourg and Berlin. The plane left Berlin at 7.40 a.m. on the return journey back to Luxembourg. The flight was uneventful and totally routine up until the approach phase of the flight. There were 19 passengers on board along with the two flight crew and one member of cabin crew. Piloting the plane is Captain Claude Poex. Aged only 26 years old, he had a total of over 4,200 flying hours on the day of the accident. His co-pilot was First Officer John Arendt, aged 32. He had a total accumulated flight experience of just over 1,100 flying hours. At this point, both pilots had been flying the Fokker 50 for a while, with the captain with three years and the first officer with nearly two years experience. The plane they are flying was manufactured in 1991 and had accumulated nearly 22,000 flying hours. The meteorological conditions at Luxembourg that morning were substantially interesting. Fog had been rolling in all morning, the weather recordings revealed that visibility had decreased over the course of a few hours, from 2 kilometers down to just a few hundred meters by the time that Flight 9642 was approaching the airport. The pilots had been trained to know that the safe limit for landing their small Fokker plane was 300 meters. The only weather forecast which was available to the flight crew for the airport at Luxembourg whilst in Berlin was that which was taken at 6 a.m., which indicated a visibility of 2 kilometers. It would not be until nearly an hour into the flight when the crew tuned into the Luxembourg Automatic Terminal Information Service or ATIS that they knew that fog was of concern. When they tuned in, they discovered that visibility was down to just 275 meters below their safe limit. The plane was to be directed into a holding pattern at the Dekirch VOR north of Luxembourg Airport at 9,000 feet. During this time beforehand, the crew decided to check out the weather for their alternate airport at Saarbrücken in West Germany. The visibility there was much better at 2 kilometers. However, the pilots decided to wait in the holding pattern in the hopes that the fog would soon clear. They were not alone in that idea, as multiple other aircraft had also decided on holding until the fog had cleared. The crew of Flight 9642 expected to be in a holding pattern for a while, and so no action was taken by the captain to attempt an approach or initiate a diversion. The two pilots had been discussing their options when the air traffic controller on approach control at Luxembourg gave Flight 9642 approach instructions. From the controller's perspective, there were now multiple aircraft in holding at Dekirch, and the controller had anticipated that the airspace would soon become full. They decided to try and clear some space out of the holding pattern, and it just so happened that Luxair Flight 9642 appeared to be in the ideal position to make an approach, and so instructed the plane as necessary. The controller, however, does not know the limitations of the Fokker 50 in low visibility at this point, and the pilots do not communicate the 300 meter rule to the tower. This action by the controller to clear Flight 9642 for an approach caught the pilots off guard as they had expected to be holding for some time. The first officer had even remarked on how they were bringing them in before all the other planes on hold. 
The pilots now quickly need to prepare their plane for a landing, and in doing so rush through the usual approach briefing as they now begin a descent to 3,000 feet. Even though the crew needed a minimum visibility of 300 meters, they can still legally make an approach with less than that, but must abort the landing if the visibility does not comply with the 300 meter rule by the time that they reach the decision altitude. Captain Poex then asked First Officer Arendt to inform the tower that they would make a go-around if they do not have 300 meters by the time that they reach the Echo Lima uniform beacon. The news from the tower was not good as the pilots had now been informed that visibility had now decreased to 250 meters. It was only at this point, now that the plane was on final approach and lined up with the runway, that the first officer informed the tower that they needed the 300 meters. They decided to continue with the approach to Equilima Uniform and would abandon the approach if needed. Equilima Uniform is a non-directional beacon which is located just a few miles from the runway at Luxembourg. The approach checklist was then performed quickly as to get the plane configured for landing. The last check on that checklist was to remove the ground idle stop. We must now discuss in a little bit more detail how the throttle controls work on the Fokker 50 plane. There are different regions of throttle movement. The throttle region used whilst in flight is between maximum thrust down to the flight idle position. Anything in this region is used in flight. Below that is the ground operating region between flight idle and ground idle. Below this is a throttle region which on the Fokker 50 is known as the beta range. To get into this mode, the ground idle stop must be removed manually, which will allow the pilots to freely move the throttle in this region. The ground idle stop itself is a physical barrier to stop the pilots from inadvertently entering this range in flight. When the throttles are moved into the beta range, power to the engines does not change. However, what does change is the pitch and angle of the individual propeller blades. With the physical changes of the propellers, reverse thrust can be achieved. As such, this mode is primarily used once the plane touches down on a runway to decelerate. Beta mode is not supposed to be used whilst in the air, as application of reverse thrust mid-flight can and has in the past caused fatal accidents. On the Fokker 50, there should be a secondary fail-safe system in where even though this throttle range can be accessed mid-flight, it should not enter reverse thrust as multiple other electrical checks should be met so that the plane knows it is firmly on the ground. The anti-skid system on the Fokker 50 checks for weight on the aircraft's landing gear and for a minimum speed of wheel spin of 10 knots before an electrical signal is then sent to remove the secondary failsafe stop. This would assure that only once the plane is on the ground that reverse thrust can be applied. After the incident and during the investigation, it was revealed that a fundamental and dangerous design flaw in the Fokker 50 was discovered in 1988 relating to the plane's anti-skid system. Electromagnetic interference in some circumstances can provide for a short length of time one saw sighting a span of just 20 microseconds, a reading of excessive wheel spin to the anti-skid system, which would remove the stop and reverse thrust could be achieved mid-flight for up to 16 seconds. The plane's manufacturer, Fokker, had issued a notice to airlines about this design flaw, suggesting that these systems be modified so this event could not occur. The notice, however, was non-binding as the likelihood of such a thing happening was deemed to be so unlikely that it would be the choice of the aircraft operators to make these changes to their planes. Luxair was among the operators which did not make this change. At 9.04, Flight 9642 reached the Equilima Uniform Beacon and visibility had appeared to not have improved. As was their procedure for a go-around, the plane would continue on the heading but would maintain an altitude of 3,000 feet and not descend to the runway. Seconds later, the controller had gone onto the radio to inform the flight crew that visibility had improved to 300 meters and was now within safe limits for landing their plane. Captain Poex then changed his mind about abandoning the approach and began making for the runway, now several hundred feet above the glide slope. What happens in the next few minutes ultimately sealed the fate of the plane. To look closely at what happened, we need to go through this by the second. Captain Poex began throttling the plane down to a below flight idle setting to try and slow the plane however inadvertently drops the throttles into the beta range. At 9.05 and 7 seconds, landing clearance was given by the tower. At 9.05 and 10 seconds, the flaps were extended. At 16 seconds, the landing gear was deployed, which sent a false signal to the anti-skid system, removing the secondary stop on the reverse thrust control. At 17 seconds, there was a noticeable change in power. 
Two seconds later, at 9.05 and 19 seconds, reverse thrust had been applied to both engines. The flight data recorder had recorded an increase of all engine parameters which mirrors that of a plane using reverse thrust. It appeared that both pilots had noticed the application of reverse thrust. First Officer Orange retracted the flaps to reduce drag, while Captain Poex applied maximum thrust on the controls. The captain had applied thrust so quickly that he actually overridden another peculiar quirk in the plane. It takes time for the propeller blades to change back into a position for regular thrust. As Captain Poex throttled up the plane, the blades stayed in their current reverse position. The Fokker 50 is now running on full reverse power and begins to drop out of the sky. The captain noticed that his throttle was not responding, and in an effort to try and stabilize the plane, he shut off both engines to stop them from producing reverse thrust. He judged that no power from the engines was less of a threat than the engines producing maximum reverse thrust mid-flight. Electrical power was now cut from the plane, and the flight data recorder stopped functioning. The cockpit voice recorder also stopped operating, however would momentarily cut in and out which revealed in those moments a panicked flight crew. The ground proximity warning system was also audible. At some point during its rapid descent to the ground, the plane turned north before it crashed into the ground where it skidded across a road before bursting into flames on a field outside the village of Nidoranvan. Some of the passengers' bodies were found outside of the plane, suggesting that once the plane had been ripped apart, they were ejected from the fuselage. One passenger was pulled from the wreckage with severe injuries but survived. Three more were rescued with severe burns but later died in hospital. The crash in total killed 20 people with two survivors. Among the two who survived was Captain Claude Poex. He was later charged with involuntary manslaughter in 2011, on the grounds that he used prohibited practices to reach a lower thrust setting. He was found guilty along with three mechanics at Luxair and the airline's acting corporate executives at the time who were later acquitted. However, Captain Poex and the remaining defendants served prison time. The investigation determined that the cause of the crash was confusion in the cockpit given the unexpected approach clearance which had prompted the captain to attempt to make use of the ground range on the throttles to make for a quicker descent to align with the approach glide slope after he already called for a go-around. Fokker had been defunct since 1996. Recommendations made by the investigation had to be forwarded to individual operators of the Fokker 50. These recommendations included a mandatory modification of the ground idle stop and related systems. The anti-skid system on board was to also be reviewed. As of 2021, however, the Fokker 50 is a rarity in disguise as many operators have now sold, scrapped or stored their planes in favour of newer aircraft. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching as always. So this channel recently passed 10,000 subscribers last weekend and I am truly thankful for your support. So to say thanks, I am producing two videos this week, of which this is the first and the next one will go out at the usual time on Saturday. I would like to take the opportunity now to once again thank my patrons, and there are a couple more today. If you would like to get your name on the screen or read out on Saturday's video, you have a few days to join my Patreon, link will be in the pinned comment. So a thank you to my £5 patrons, Aidan Montgomery, D. Rogers, Hector Palmatellas, I hope I said your name right, Jen, KTP123, Ken Zachman, and Marie Innes. Thanks as always. And a special thanks to my £10 patrons, Cherub Cherub, Daniel Hendricks, Side Effect, and Will Tanner. You guys really helped to make this channel possible. I thank you so much for your continued support. Thank you. Have a great evening, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.